Miss Julie is mad again tonight. Absolutely mad. Oh, and so you're here, are you? I accompanied the Count to the station, and when I passed the barn on my way back, I went in to have a dance. At that time, Miss Julie was dancing with that man, Forster. When she noticed me, she made straight for me and asked me to be her partner in the waltz. And from that moment, she danced in a, a way such as I've never seen anything of the kind before. She, she is simply crazy. She's always been that, but never as much as in the last fortnight since the engagement was broken off. Yes, what an affair that was to be sure. The man certainly was a fine fellow, even though he didn't have much cash. Well, to be sure, they have so many whims and fancies. In any case, it's strange that the young lady should prefer to stay at home with the servants rather than to accompany her father to her relations, isn't it? Yes. The odds are that she feels herself a little embarrassed after the affair with her young man. Maybe. But at any rate, he was a good chap. Do you know, Christine, how it came about? I saw the whole show, though I didn't let them see that I noticed anything. What? You saw it? Yes, that I did. They were one evening down there in the stable, and the young lady was training him, as she called it. What, what, do, you, what do you think she was doing? She made him jump over the riding whip like a dog, which one is teaching to hop. <laughs> he jumped over twice, and each time he got a cut. But the third time, he snatched the riding whip out of her hand, smashed into smithereens, and cleared out. Was that it? No, you can't mean it. Yes, that was how it happened. Can't you give me something nice to eat, though, Christine? Well, there's only a little bit of liver, which I've cut off the joint. Ah, oh, very nice. That's my favorite dish. But you might have warmed up the plate. Why, you're even more particular than the Count himself once you get going. Ah, oh, you mustn't excite me like that. You know jolly well how sensitive I am. There, there now. It was only because I love you. A beer on Midsummer's Night. Not, not for me, thank you. I can go one better than that myself. <sighs> Yellow label, do you see, dear? Just give me a glass, a, a wine glass, of course, when a fellow's going to drink wine. God pity the woman who ever gets you for a husband, a growler like you. Oh, don't jaw. You'd be only too pleased if you could got a fellow like me. And I don't think for a minute that you're in any way put out by my being called your best boy. Oh, very nice, very nice. Not quite mellowed out enough, though. That's the only thing. We bought this at Dijon. It came to four francs the liter without the glass. And then there was the duty as well. What are you cooking in there now? It makes the most infernal stink. Oh, that's just some asafoetida, which Miss Julie wants to have for Diana. You ought to express yourself a little more prettily, Christine. Why have you got to get up on a holiday evening and cook for the brute? Is it ill, eh? Yes, it is. It slunk out to the dog in the courtyard, and there it played the fool, and the young lady doesn't want to know anything about it, do you see? Yes, in one respect, the young lady is too proud, and in another, not proud enough, just like the Countess was when she was alive. She felt most at home in the kitchen and, and in the stable, but she would never ride a horse. She'd go about in dirty cuffs, but insisted on having the Count's coronet with the buttons. The young lady, so far now as she is, concerned, doesn't take enough trouble about either herself or her person. In a manner of speaking, she is not refined. Why, only just now, when she was dancing in the barn, she snatched Forster away from Anna and asked him to dance with herself. We wouldn't behave like that, but that's what happens when the gentry make themselves cheap. Then they are cheap, and no mistake about it. But she is real stately. Superb. Ooh, what a bust. And I... Yes, but she makes up a good bit, too. I know what Clara says. Who helps her to dress? Oh, Clara, you women are always so envious of each other. I've been out with her and seen her ride, and then how she dances. I say, John, won't you dance with me when I'm ready? Of course I will. Promise me. Promise? If I say I'll do a thing, then I always do it. 
A anyway, thanks very much for the food. It was damn good. I'll be back in a minute. Well, is it ready? Do the ladies want time to talk secrets? Is he inquisitive? Ah, what a nice smell of violets. Impudent person. Is a fellow than an expert in perfumes. <laughs> Have you ladies then been brewing a magic potion this midsummer night? Something so as to be able to read one's fortunes in the stars that you may get a sight of the future? Yes. If he can manage to see that, he must have very good eyes. Pour it into a half bottle and cork it securely. Let the man come now and dance a shoddish with me, John. I don't want to be disobliging to anybody, but I promised Christine to dance. Oh, well, she can get somebody else. What do you say, Christine? Won't you let me, John? I haven't got any say in the matter. If you are so condescending, miss, it wouldn't do at all for him to refuse. You just go and be grateful for such an honor. Speaking frankly and without meaning any offense, do you think it's quite wise, Miss Julie, to dance twice in succession with the same gentleman, particularly as the people here are only too ready to draw all sorts of conclu conclusions? What do you mean? What conclusions? What does the man mean? As you won't understand me, Miss, I must express myself more clearly. It doesn't look well to prefer one of your inferiors to others who accept the same exceptional honor. Prefer? What idea is the man getting into his head? I'm absolutely astonished. I, the mistress of the house, all my servants dance with my presence. And if I actually want to dance, I want to do it with a man who can steer so that I haven't got the bore of being laughed at. I await your orders, miss. I am at your service. Don't talk now of orders. This evening, we're simply married men and women at a revel, and we lay aside all rank. Give me your arm. Don't be uneasy, Christine. I'm not going to entice your treasure away from you. Oh. Yes, she is mad to dance like that. And everybody stands by the door and grins at her. What do you say about it, Christine? Ah, it's just her time. And then she always takes on so strange. But won't you come now and dance with me? You aren't offended with me that I cut your last dance? No, not the least bit. You know that well enough, and I know my place besides. You're a sensible girl, Christine. You'd make an excellent housekeeper. Charming cavalier you are to be sure to run away from your partner. On the contrary, Miss Julie, I've been hurrying, all I know as you see, to find the girl I've left behind me. Do you know none of the others dance like you do? But why do you go about in livery on a holiday evening? Take it off at once. In that case, Miss, I must ask you to leave me for a moment because my black coat hangs up here. Is he bashful on my account? Just about changing a coat? Is he going into his room and coming back again? So far as I'm concerned, he can stay here. I'll turn around. By your leave, miss. I say, Christine, is John your sweetheart that he's so thick with you? My sweetheart? Yes, if you like. We call it that. Call it? <laughs> well, you yourself, miss, had a sweetheart and... Yes, we were properly engaged. But nothing at all came of it. <clears throat> Très gentil, Monsieur Jean. Très gentil. Oh, vous voulez plaisanter, madame. Et vous voulez parler français? And where did you pick that up? Well, in Switzerland, when I was waiter in one of the best hotels in Lucerne. Well, you look quite like a gentleman in that coat. Charming. Ah, you're flattering me. Flatter, you. Well, my natural modesty won't allow me to imagine that you're paying true compliments to a man like me, so I took the liberty of supposing that you're exaggerating, or in a manner of speaking, flattering. Where did you learn to string your words together like that? You must have been to the theater a great deal. Quite right, I've been to no end of places. But you were born here in this neighborhood. My father was odd man to the state attorney of this parish, and I saw you, 
miss when you were a child, although you didn't notice me. Really? Yes, and I remember one instant in particular. Uh, yes, I, I mustn't speak about that. Oh, yes, you tell me. What, just to please me? No, I really can't now. Perhaps some other time. Some other time means never. Come, is it then so dangerous to tell me now? It's not dangerous, but it's much best to leave it alone. Just look at her over there. She'll make a cheerful wife. Perhaps she snores as well. She doesn't do that. She speaks in her sleep. How do you know that she speaks in her sleep? I've heard it. Why don't you sit down? I shouldn't take such a liberty in your presence. And if I order you to? Well, then I obey. Sit down, but wait a moment. Can't you give me something to drink? I don't know what's in the refrigerator. I don't think there's anything besides beer. It's not to be sniffed at. Personally, I'm so simple in my taste that I prefer it to wine. <sighs> May I offer you some? Thanks. Would you have some as well? I'm not what you might call keen on beer, but if you order me, miss. Order? It seems to me that as a courteous cavalier, you might keep your partner company. Oh, a very sound observation. Drink my health. I believe the old duffer is bashful. <laughs> the health of my mistress. Bravo. Now, as a finishing touch, you must kiss my shoe. First rate. You should have gone on the stage. <laughs> this kind of thing mustn't go any further, miss. Anybody might come in and see us. What would it matter? Well, people would talk and make no bones about what they said either. And if you knew, miss, how their tongues have already been wagging, then... What did they say, then? Tell me, but sit down. I don't want to hurt you, but you made use of expressions which pointed to innuendos of such a kind. Uh, yes, you'll understand this perfectly well yourself. You're not a child anymore, and if a lady is seen to drink alone with a man, even if it's only a servant at a tet at night, then... What then? Besides, we're not alone. Christine is here. Yes, asleep. A person who's been on her legs all day by the fireplace will naturally be tired when night comes, and sleep should be respected. That's a pretty thought. And does you credit, thank you. Come out now, pick some clothes for me. With you, miss. With me? It's impossible, absolutely impossible. I don't understand what you mean. Can it be possible that you imagine such a thing for a single minute? Well, me, no, but the people, yes. What? That I should be in love with a servant. Uh, not by any means an educated man, but there have been cases, and nothing is sacred to the people. I do believe the man is an aristocrat. Yes, that I am. And I'm on the down path. Don't go down, miss. Take my advice. Nobody will believe that you went down of your own free will. People will always say that you fell. I have a better opinion of people than you have. Come and try. Come. You are strange, you know. Perhaps I am, but so are you. Besides, everything is strange. Life, men, the whole thing is simply an iceberg, which is driven out into the water until it sinks. Sinks. I have a dream, which comes up now and again, and now it haunts me. I'm sitting on the top of a high pillar and can't see any possibility of getting down. I feel dizzy when I look down, but I have to get down all the same. I haven't got the pluck to throw myself off. I can't keep my balance and I want to fall over, but I don't fall. And I don't get a moment's peace until I'm down below. No rest until I've got to the ground. And when I've got down to the ground, I want to get right into the earth. Have you ever felt anything like that? No. I usually dream I'm lying under a high tree in a gloomy forest. I want to get right up to the top and look round at the light landscape where the sun shines and plunder the birds' nests where the golden eggs lie. And I climb and climb, but the trunk is so thick and so smooth, and it's such a long way to the first branch. But I know if only I can get to the first branch, I can climb to the top as though it were a ladder. I haven't got there yet, but I must get there. 
even though it were only in my dreams. And here I am now, standing chattering to you. Come along now, just out into the park. We must sleep tonight on nine Midsummer Night's herbs, and then our dreams will come true. Oh. Let me see what's got into your eye. Oh, uh, no, nothing, really. But wait, wait, wait a bit. Let's see what it, oh. Oh, it was the sleeve of my dress I grazed you. Just sit down, and I'll help you get it out. Oh. Quite still, quite still. There, will he be obedient now? I do believe the great strong man's trembling. Arms like that. Miss Julie. Yes, Monsieur Jean. Uh, attention, je ne suis qu'un homme. Oh, he sits still. See, it's out now. Let him kiss my hand and thank me. Miss Julie, listen to me. Christine has cleared out and gone to bed. Won't you listen to me? Kiss my hand first. Listen to me. Kiss my hand first. All right, but you must be responsible for the consequences. What consequences? What consequences? Don't you know it's dangerous to play with fire? Not for me. I'm insured. No, you're not. And even if you were, there's inflammable material pretty close. Do you mean yourself? <laughs> yes. Not that I'm particularly dangerous, but I'm just a young man. With an excellent appearance. What incredible vanity. Don Juan, I suppose, or Joseph. I believe on my honor, the man's a Joseph. Do you believe that? I almost fear it. Hands off. Are you serious or joking? Serious. In that case, what took place before was also serious. You're taking the game much too seriously, and, and that's dangerous. But I'm tired of the game now. So would you please excuse me so that I can go back to my work? The Count must have his boots early, and midnight is long past. Leave the boots alone. No, it's my duty, and I'm bound to do it. But I didn't take on the job of being your playmate. Besides, the thing is out of the question, as I consider myself much too good for that kind of thing. You're proud. In some cases, not in others. Have you ever loved? We people don't use that word. Have you been to school? A little, but I've read a lot of novels and been a lot to the theater. Besides, I've heard refined people talk and I've learned most from them. Do you listen then to what we say? Yes, that's right. And I've picked up a great deal when I've sat on the coachman's box or been rowing the boat. I once heard you, miss, and a young lady friend of yours. Really? What did you hear then? Well, that I can't tell you, but I was really somewhat surprised, and I couldn't understand where you'd learned all the words from. Perhaps at bottom there isn't so great a difference between glass and glass as one thinks. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. The riffraff is always cowardly, and, and in the fight it's best to fly. Fly? But where to? We can't go out, and we can't go up to Christine's room either. Then come into my room. Necessity knows no law, and you can rely on my being your real, sincere, and respectful friend. But just think, could they look for you there? I'll bolt the door, and if they try to break it in, I'll shoot. Come. Come. Promise me. On my oath. There, do you see? You've seen it for yourself now. You think it possible to go on staying here? No, I don't anymore, but what's to be done? Run away. Travel. Far away from here. Travel? Yes, but where? Sweden, the Italian lakes. You've never been there, have you? No. Is it nice there? Oh, a perpetual summer oranges, laurels, whoo! What are we to start doing afterward? We shall start a first-class hotel there with first-class visitors. A hotel? That's a life, to be sure. You take it from me. An endless succession of new sites, new languages, no 
not a minute to spare for sulking or brooding. No, looking for work for the work comes of its own. The bell goes on ringing day and night. The train puffs, the omnibus comes and goes all while the gold pieces roll into the till. That's a life to be sure. Yes, that's what you call life, but what about me? The mistress of the house, the ornament of the firm with your appearance and your manners, oh, success is certain, splendid. <laughs> ah, let's get away from here. Right away by the next train, by 6.30, we're at Malmo, at 8.40 in the morning at Hamburg, Frankfurt one day in Basel, and in Como by the St. Gothard Tunnel in, let's say, three days. Only three days. That all sounds very nice. But John, you must give me courage, dear. Tell me that you love me, dear. Come and take me in your arms. I should like to, but I dare not. Not here in the house. I love you. No doubt about it. Can you have any real doubt about it, miss? Miss? You see, dear, there are no longer any barriers between us, say, dear. I can't. There are still barriers between us, so long as we remain in this house. But only come to another country, and I'll make people go on their knees before my porter's livery. Good. Good. Oh yes, the title of count is to be bought in Romania, and then you will be a countess, my countess. Tell me that you love me, dear. If you don't, why? What am I if you don't? I'll tell you a thousand times later on, but not here. And above all, your sentimentalism, if everything isn't to go smash, we must look at the matter quietly, like sensible people. You sit there. I'll sit here, and then we'll have a little chat just as though nothing has happened. Oh my God, have you no feeling then? Me? There's no man who has no more feeling than I have, but I can control myself. A short time back you could kiss my shoe, and now? Yes, a little while ago, but now we've got something else to think of. Don't talk brutally to me. No, but I'll talk sense. We've made fools of ourselves once. Don't let's go do it again. The count may turn up any minute and we've got to map out our lives in advance. What do you think of my plans for the future? Do you agree? They seem quite nice. But one question, you need large capital for so great an undertaking. Have you got it? Have I got it? Of course I have. I've got my special knowledge, my exceptional experience, my knowledge of languages. That's a capital which is worth something to be sure. But we can't buy a single railway ticket with all that. That's true enough. And so I'll look for somebody who can put up the money. Where can you find a man like that all at once? Then you'll have to find him if you're going to be my companion. I can't do that. And I've got nothing myself. In that case, the whole scheme collapses. And? Things remain as they are now. Do you think I'll go on staying any longer under this roof as your mistress? Do you think I will let the people point their finger at me? Do you think that I can look my father in the face? No. Take me away from here from all this humiliation and dishonor. Oh my God, what have I done? Oh my God, my God. Oh, so that's the game. What have you done? Just the same as a thousand other people like you. And now you despise me. I'm falling, I'm falling. Fall down to my level, and I'll lift you up again afterward. What awful power dragged me down to you. The power which draws the weak to the strong, draws him who falls to him who rises. Or was it love? Love this. Do you know what love is? I? <laughs> Do you really suggest that I meant that? Don't you think I'd have felt it already long ago? What phrases, to be sure, and what thoughts? That's what I learned, and that's what I am. But just keep your nerve and don't play the fine lady. We've got into a mess, and we've got to get out of it. Look here, my girl. Come here. I'll, I'll give you an extra glass, my dear. Where did you get that wine from? The cellar. My father's burgundy. Is it too good for his son-in-law? I don't think. 
and I've been drinking beer. That only shows that you've got worse taste than me. Thief? Mm. Want to blab? Oh, oh, the accomplice of a house thief. I, I drank too much last night, and I did things in my dream. Summer night, the feast of innocent joys. Innocent? <laughs> Is there, at this moment, a human being as unhappy as I am? Why are you? After such a fine conquest, just think of Christine in there. Don't you think she's got feelings? Well? I used to think so, but I don't think so anymore. No, a servant's a servant. And a whore's a whore. Oh, God in heaven, take my miserable life. Take me out of this filth in which I'm sinking. Save me, save me. I can't gainsay but that you make me feel sorry. Once upon a time when I lay in the onion bed and saw you in the rose garden, then I'll tell you straight, I had the same dirty thoughts as all youngsters. And then you wanted to die for me. In the oak bed. That was mere gas. Lies. You mean... Uh, uh, near enough. I read the story once in the paper about a chimney sweep who laid down in a chest full of lilac because he was ordered to take additional nourishment. Yes, so you are. What other idea should I have thought of? One's always got to capture a gal with flatteries. Scoundrel. Whore. So I must be the first branch, must I? But the branch was rotten. I've got to be the notice board of the hotel, have I? I'm going to be the hotel. Sit in your office, decoy your customers, fake your bills. I'll see to that myself. To think that a human being can be so thoroughly dirty. Wash yourself clean. Lackey, menial, stand up you when I'm speaking. You wench of a menial, hold your jaw and clear out. Is it for you to come ragging me that I'm rough? No one in my station of life could have made herself so cheap as the way you carried on tonight, my girl. Do you think that a clean-minded girl excites men in the way that you do? Have you ever seen a girl in my position offer herself in the way that you did? That's right. Strike me, trample on me. I haven't deserved anything better. I'm a wretched woman, but help me. Help me to get away if there's any chance of it. I don't want to deny my share in the honor of having seduced you, but do you think that a person in my position would have dared to have raised his eyes to you if you yourself hadn't invited him to do it? I'm still quite amazed. And proud. Why not? <laughs> Although I must acknowledge that the victory was too easy to make me get a swelled head over it. Strike me once more. No, I'd rather ask you to forgive me what I've already said. I don't hit a defenseless person, and least of all a girl. I can't deny that from one point of view, I enjoyed seeing that it was not gold, but glitter which dazzled us all down below, to have seen that the back of the hawk was only drab, and that there was powder on those dainty cheeks, and that those manicured nails could have grimy tips, that the handkerchief was dirty, even though it did smell of scent. But it pained me, on the other hand, to have seen that the thing that I've been striving for was not something higher, something sounder. It pains me to have seen you sink so deep that you are far beneath your own cook. It pains me to see that the autumn flowers have crumpled up in the rain and turned into a mess. You're talking as though you are already my superior. I am. Look here, I could change you into a countess, but you could never make me into a count. But I am bred from a count, and that you can never be. That's true, but I could produce counts myself if I only had them. But you're a thief, and I'm not. Well, there are worse things than being a thief. That's not the worst. Besides, if I'm serving in a household, I look upon myself, in a manner of speaking, as one of the family, as a child of the house, and it isn't regarded as stealing if a child picks a berry from a large branch. Miss Julie, you're a magnificent woman, much too good for the likes of me. You've been the prey of a mad fit, and you want to cover up your mistake, and that's why you got it into your head that you love me, but you don't. Of course, it may be that only my personal charms attract you. And in that case, your love is not a bit better than mine. But I can never be satisfied with being nothing more to you than a mere beast 
and I can't get your love. Are you sure of it? You mean it might come about? I might love you? Well, yes, no doubt about it. You're pretty. You're refined. Nice when you want to be, and when you have roused desire in a man, the odds are that it will never be extinguished. You are like burning wine with strong herbs in it and a, a kiss from you. Let me alone. That's not the way to win me. In what way then? Not in that way, not with caresses and pretty words, not with forethought for the future, escape from disgrace. In what way then? In what way? In what way? I don't know. I have no idea. I loathe you like vermin, but I can't be without you. Run away with me. Run away? Yes, of course, we'll run away. But I'm so tired. Give me a glass of wine. But we must talk first. We've still a little time to spare. Don't drink to such excess, you'll get drunk. What does it matter? What does it matter? It's cheap to get drunk. What do you want to say to me then? We'll run away, but we'll talk first. That means I will talk because up to now, you've done all the talking yourself. You told me about your life and now I'll tell you about mine. Then we shall know each other thoroughly before we start on our joint wanderings. One moment. Excuse me. Just think, if you won't be sorry afterward for giving away all the secrets of your life. Aren't you my friend? Yes, for a short time. Don't trust me. You don't mean what you say. Besides, everybody knows my secrets. Look here. My mother was not of noble birth, but quite simple. She was brought up in the theories of her period about the equality and freedom of women and all the rest of it. And she had a distinct aversion to marriage. When my father proposed to her, she answered that she would never become his wife. But she did. I came to the world against the wish of my mother, so far as I can understand. The next thought I was brought up by my mother to lead what she called a child's natural life. And to do that, I had to learn everything that boy had to learn so that I could be a living example of her theory that a woman is good as a man. <laughs> you hate the men, miss. Yes, usually. But my weak fit comes on, ugh. So you hate me as well? Infinitely. I could have you killed like a beast. The criminal is condemned to hard labor, but the beast is killed? Quite right. But there's no beast here and no prosecutor either. What are we going to do? Travel. To torture each other to death? No. Have a good time for two, three years, or as long as we can, and then... Die. Die? What nonsense. I'm all for starting a hotel. By the lake of Como, where the sun is always shining, where the laurel trees are green at Christmas and the oranges glow. The lake of Como is a rainy hole. I didn't see any oranges there except in the vegetable shops, but it's a good place for visitors because there are a lot of villas which can be let to honeymooning couples. And that's a very profitable industry. I'll tell you why. They take a six months lease and travel away after three weeks. Why after three weeks? They quarrel, of course, but the rent's got to be paid all the same and then we let again and so it goes on one after the other for love goes on to all eternity, even though it doesn't keep quite so long. Then you won't die with me. I won't die at all just yet. Thank you. I, in the first place, because I still enjoy life. And besides, I look upon suicides as a sin against providence, which has given us life. Do you believe in God, you? Yes, I certainly do. I go to church every other Sunday. But speaking frankly, I'm tired of all this, and I'm going to bed now. You are, are you? And do you think that I'm satisfied with that? Do you know what a man owes to the woman he has dishonored? If you don't mind, I don't like being in anyone's debt. Do you know what the law provides? Unfortunately, the law does not provide any penalty for the woman who seduces a man. Can you find any other way out of this than that we should travel, marry, and then get divorced again? And if I refuse to take on the misalliance? Misalliance? 
yes, for me, I've got better ancestors than you have. I haven't got any incendiaries in my pedigree. How do you know? Well, at any rate, you can't prove the contrary, for we have no other pedigree other than what you can see in the registry. But I read your book on the drawing room table about your pedigree. Do you know what the founder of your line was? A miller with whose wife the king spent a night during the Danish war. I don't run to ancestors like that. I've got no ancestors at all, matter of fact, but I can be an ancestor myself. This is what I get for opening my heart to a cad, for giving away my family honor. Family shame, you mean, but <laughs> look here, I told you so, people shouldn't drink because then people talk nonsense and people shouldn't talk nonsense. Oh, how I wish it undone, how I wish it undone. For the last time, what do you want? Do you want me to cry? Do you want me to jump over your riding whip? Do you want me to kiss you or, or tempt you away for three weeks by the Lake of Como and then what am I going to do? What do you want? The thing's beginning to be a nuisance, but that's what one gets for meddling in the private affairs of, of the fair sex. Miss Julie, I see you're unhappy. I know that you suffer, but I can't understand you. People like us don't go in for such fairy tales. We don't hate each other either. We take love as a game when our work gives us time off, but we haven't got the whole day and whole night to devote to it. L let me look at you. You are ill, you are certainly ill. You must be kind to me and now talk like a man. Help me, help me. Tell me what I must do, what course shall I take? My Christ, if I only knew myself. I'm raving. I've been mad, but isn't there any way by which I can be saved? Stay here and keep quiet. Nobody knows anything. Impossible. The servants know it and Christine knows it. They don't know and they would never believe anything of the kind. Might happen again. That's true. And the results? The results? Where was I wool gathering not to have thought about it? <laughs> yes, there's only one thing to do to clear out at once. I won't go with you because then it's all up. But you must travel alone, away, anywhere you like. Alone? Where? I, I can't do it. You must, and before the count comes back too. If you stay, then you know what will be the result. If one has taken the first step, then one goes on with it because one's already in for the disgrace and then one gets bolder and bolder. At last you get copped, so you must travel. Write later on to the Count and confess everything, except that it was me, and he'll never guess that. I don't think either that he'd be very pleased if he did find out. I'll travel, if you'll come with me. Are you mad, miss? Do you want to elope with your servant? It'll be all in the papers the next morning and the Count would never get over it. I can't travel, I can't stay. Help me. I'm so tired, so infinitely tired. Give me orders, put life into me again. Or I can't think anymore and I can't do anymore. See here now what a wretched creature you are. Why do you strut about and turn up your nose as though you were the Lord of creation? <laughs> well then I will give you orders. You go and change your clothes get some money to travel with, and come down here again. Come up with me. To your room? Now you're mad again. Uh, no, you go at once. Please, speak kindly to me. An order always has an unkind sound. Just feel it now for yourself. Just feel it. Good Lord. What does the man look like? What's happened here? <sighs> Miss Julie called in the servants. Were you so sound asleep you didn't hear it? I slept like a log. And dressed already for church? Yes. You know, you promised, dear, to come to communion with me today. Yes, that's true. <sighs> what gospel is it today? I've got an idea. It's about the beheading of John the Baptist. Oh, that's certain to last an, an awful time. <laughs> I'm so sleepy, so sleepy. Yes. What have you been doing all night? You look absolutely washed out. 
I've been sitting here chatting with Miss Julie. She doesn't know what's decent. My God, she doesn't. I say, Christine, dear. Well? It's awfully strange when one comes to think it over. What's so strange about her? Everything. Did you drink together as well? Yes. Oh, look me in the eyes. Yes. Is it possible? Is it possible? Yes, it is. Crikey. I'd never have thought it that I wouldn't know. Oh, oh. You're not jealous of her. No, not of her. If it had been Clara or Sophie, yes, I should have been. Poor girl. No, I tell you what, I won't stay any longer in this house where one can't keep any respect for the gentry. Why should one respect them? Yes, and you who are as sly as their maid ask me that. But will you serve people who carry on so improper? Why, one lowers oneself by doing it, it seems to me. Yes, but it's certainly a consolation for us that the others are no better than we are. No, I don't find that. Because if they're not better, it's not worthwhile trying to be like our betters. And think of the Count. Think of him. He's had so much trouble all his life. Long. No, I won't stay any longer in this house. And with the likes of you. If it had been even Kronbog. If it had been a better man. What do you mean? Yes, yes, you're quite a good fellow, I know. But there's always a difference between people and people. And I can never forget it. A young lady who was so proud, so haughty to the men that she would, one could never imagine that she would ever give herself to a man. And then the likes of you, her who wanted to have the poor, poor Diana shot dead at once because she ran after a dog in the courtyard. Yes, I must say that, but I won't stay here any longer. But on the 24th of October, I go my way. And then? Well, as we're on the subject, it would be about time for you to look out for another job, as we want to get married. Yes. What kind of job am I to look out for? I can't get as good a place as this if I'm married. Of course you can't. But you must try to get a place as a porter, or see if you can get a situation as a servant in some private institution. The, the victuals are few, but certain, and then the wife and children get a pension. That's all very fine, but it's not quite my line of country to start off about thinking of dying for wife and child. I must confess that I've higher views. Your views, to be sure. But you've also got obligations. Just think of her. You mustn't nag me by talking about my obligations. I know quite well what I've got to do. Uh, but we've got time to think about all this. Go in and get ready, and then we'll go to church. Who's walking about upstairs? I don't know. Perhaps Clara. I suppose it can't be the Count who's come back without anyone having heard him. Uh, no, I, I don't think so, uh, because then he'd have rung already. Yes. God knows, I've gone through the likes of this before. I'm ready now. Hush, Christine is awake. Did she have any idea? Well, she knows nothing, but my God, what a sight you look. What, how do I look? You're as white as a corpse and pardon my saying it, your face is dirty. Then give me some water to wash. All right. Ah, oh, the sun has risen. And then the hobgoblin flies away. Yes, the goblin has really been at work last night. Listen to me. Come with me. I've got the needful, John. Enough? Enough to start on? Come with me. I can't travel alone today. Just think of it, midsummer day in a stuffy train, stuck in among a lot of people who stare at one, waiting about at stations when one wants to fly. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then all my memories, 
my memories of Midsummer's Day when I was a child with the church decorated with flowers, birch and lilac, the midday meals at a splendidly covered table, relatives and friends, the afternoon in the park, dancing and music, flowers and games. Oh, you can run away and run away, but your memories, your repentance and your pangs of conscience follow on in the luggage van. I'll come with you, but right away, before it's too late, now, immediately. Then get ready. But, but no luggage. In that case, we're lost. No, no luggage. Only what we can take with us in the compartment. What have you got there, then? What is it? It's only my little canary. I don't want to leave it behind. Come, I say, have we got to cart along a bird cage with us? How absolutely mad. Leave the bird there. The only thing I'm taking with me from home. The only living creature that likes me after Diana was faithless to me. Don't be cruel. Let me take it with me. Leave it there, I tell you, and don't talk so loud. Christine might hear us. No, I won't leave it behind among strangers. I'd rather you killed it. Then give me the little thing. I'll twist its neck for it. Help me, Christine. Help me against this man. <sighs> what a pretty sight for a holiday morning. And what a dirty mess you've been making here. What can it all mean? How you're shrieking and... Christine, you're a woman and my friend. Beware of the scoundrel. If you ladies want to have an argument, I'll go in and have a shave. You will understand me and you must do what I tell you. No, I certainly don't understand such carry-ons. Where are you going to in your traveling dress? And he's got his hat on. What's it all mean? Listen to me, Christine, listen to me, then I'll tell you everything. I don't want to know anything. You must listen to me. What is it then? Your tomfoolery with John? Look here, I don't care anything about that because it had nothing to do with me. But if you think you're going to tempt him to elope with you, then we'll put a very fine spoke in your little wheel. Now try to be calm, Christine, and listen to me. I can't stay here and John can't stay here, so we must travel. Mm -hmm. Look here, I've got an idea I know. How about if we all three went abroad to Switzerland and start a hotel together? I I've got money, you see, and John and I will look after the whole thing and you, I thought, could take over the kitchen. Isn't it nice? Just say yes and come with us and all is fixed up. Just say yes. Mm -hmm. You've never been out and traveled, Christine. You must come out in the world and look round. You can have no idea how jolly it is to travel on a railway, to be always seeing new people, new countries. Look here, miss. Do you believe in all of this yourself? Do I believe in it myself? Yes. I don't know. I don't really believe in anything anymore. In anything and anything at all. So, you thought you'd elope, did you? Elope, come, that's a big word you heard. You heard Miss Julie's plan, and although she's tired now from having been up all night, the scheme can still be put through. I say, did you mean that I should be cook there for her? Be so kind as to speak more refined when you're talking of your mistress. Understand? Mistress? Yes. No. I say, I say there. Yes. Listen to me. It is much better for you if you do and don't gabble so much. Miss Julie is your mistress and you ought to despise yourself for the same reason that you despise her. I have always had so much self-respect. <laughs> you can despise others. That I have never lowered myself below my place. Just say, if you can, that the Count's cook had anything to do with the cattleman or the swineherd. You just try it on. Quite so. You had a little something with a nice fellow and very lucky for you too. A nice fellow to be sure, who sells the Count's oats out of a stable. You're a nice one to talk. You get commissions from the vegetable man and ain't above being squared by the butcher. What? And so it's you that can't respect your mistress anymore? <laughs> you, you, I don't think. No fear. Um, come along to church now. A good sermon will do a lot of good about the way, after the way you've been carrying on.
I'm not going to church today. You go alone and confess your own sins. Yes, that I will. And I'll come home with forgiveness. And for you too. The Redeemer suffered and died on the cross for all our sins. And if we go to him with faith and a contrite spirit, he will take all our guilt on himself. Do you believe that, Christine? That's my living faith. As true as I stand here, and that's my faith from a child that I've kept ever since I was young. And where sin overflows, their grace overflows as well. If I had your faith, <laughs> if. Mark you, one can't just go out and get it. Who gets it then? That's the great secret of grace, miss. Mark you, and God is no respecter of persons, but the first shall be last. Yes, but then he is respecter of persons, alas. And it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a e needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Mark you, that's what it is, Miss Julie. Well, I'm off. Alone. And on the way, I'll tell the stable boy not to let out any horses in case anybody wants to travel before the count comes home. Adieu. What a devil. And all that fuss about a canary. Leave the canary out of it. Can you see a way out of all of this, an end for the whole thing? No. What would you do in my position? In your position? Uh, just uh, wait a minute, will you? As a girl of good birth, as a woman, a fallen woman, I, I don't know. Aha! I've got it! That? Well, uh, yes. But I wouldn't do it. No, note that well. That's the difference between us. Because you're a man and I'm a woman. What difference does that make? The same difference as between men and women. I want to. But I can't do it. My father couldn't do it either the time when he ought to have. No. He shouldn't have done it. His first duty was to revenge himself. Now my mother avenges herself again through me. Have you never loved your father, Miss Julie? Yes, infinitely, but I'm sure that I've hated him as well. I must have done it without notice. But he brought me up to despise my own sex, to be half a woman and half a man. Who is to blame for what has happened? My father, my mother, I myself? I myself, I haven't got a self at all. I haven't got a thought which I didn't get from my father. I haven't got a passion which I don't get from my mother. In the latest phase of the equality of men and women that I got from my fiance, whom I called a scoundrel for his pains. How then can it be my own fault to shove the blame on Jesus like Christine does? No, I've got too much pride and too much common sense for that thanks to my father's teachings. And as for a rich man not being able to get into the kingdom of heaven, that's a lie. Christina's got money in the savings banks. Certainly she won't get in. Who is responsible for the wrong? It doesn't matter to us who is. I know I've got to put up with the blame and the consequences. Well, yes, but... The Count's at home. Just think if Christine... He must have already gone to his secretary by now. It's John, my lord. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord, at once. Very well, my lord. Yes, in half an hour. What did he say? My god, what did he say? He asked for his boots and his coffee in half an hour. In half an hour, then. Oh, I'm so tired. I can't do anything. I can't repent. I can't run away. I can't stay. I can't live. I can't die. Help me now. Give me orders and I'll obey like a dog. Give me this last service. Save my honor. Save my name. You know what I ought to will, but don't will. Do you will it and order me to accomplish it? I, I don't know, but now I can't either. I can't make it out myself. It's just as though it were the result of... of... This coat I've just taken off, but I can't give you my orders. And now, after the Count has spoken to me, I can't explain it properly, but ah, it's the livery which I've got on my back. I believe if the Count were to come in now and order me to cut my throat, I'd do it on the spot. Then just 
do as though you were he and I were you. You can imagine it about a minute ago when you were before me on your knees, then you were a knight. Have you ever been to the theater and seen the mesmerist? He says to the medium, take the broom, he takes it, he says sweep and he sweeps. But in that case, the medium must be asleep. I'm already asleep. The whole room looks as though it were full of smoke and you look like an iron furnace. She's like a man in black clothes and top hat and your eyes glow like coals when the fire goes out and your face is a white blur like cinders. So warm, so fine. And then it's so light and so quiet. There is the broom. Go, now that it's light, outside into the barn and Thank you. Now I'm going to have peace. But tell me now that the first shall have their fair share of grace too. Tell me that even though you don't believe it. The first? No, I can't do that. Oh, but one minute, Miss Julie, I've got it. You don't belong any longer to the first. You are beneath the last. That's true. I'm beneath the very last. I'm the last myself. Oh, but now I can't go. Tell me again that I must go. No, I can't do that again now either. I can't. And the first shall be last. Don't think, don't think. You rob me of all my strength and make a coward of me. What? I believe the clock was moving. No, shall we put paper in to be so funky of the sound of a clock? But it's something more than a clock. There's something that sits behind it, a hand, put it in motion and something else starts the hand in motion just put your fingers to your ears and then it strikes worse again. It strikes until you give an answer and then it's too late and then come the police and then <laughs> It's awful, but there's no other way out. Go.